Alrighty, I'm back. I've got to do this tonight because I'm trying to avoid looking out the window because it is snowing and snowing and snowing and snowing and I don't want to see it. So, I am back with Valkyrie here. And now I have another picture, which of course I do because it, <laughs> these people post a lot of pictures. And in the new picture, she looks like she's more brown than black. So, whatever. I'm going to, um, I might adjust. I'm going to get my magic eraser out and just lighten it up a bit. And that should bring out some of the high brown highlights anyway. But, uh, so let's do the amazing magic eraser. Just kind of get this, maybe pick up some of the little messes I made here. Anyway, now if you know me and know how I paint, I love me some magic eraser. I have I bought a case from Amazon of cheap imitation ones. What's cool is sometimes okay, I'm gonna try to get my head out of this video. So I'm gonna sit up straight. But um what's cool about magic erasers is they work really well for cleaning too. <laughs> I don't usually use them for that, but it's always an option. I take my magic erasers and cut them into little squares. And pretty much use the edges. So. Okay, and I don't want to lighten up the back, the where the uh, back of the dog is, the dog butt. But I do want to round that out a little bit. I need to rinse this off. Sometimes I erase too much. Okay, a lot of the time I erase too much. <laughs> but hey, I do this. I do some commissions, but mostly I do this because I fall in love with these dogs and these groups. <laughs> and I just have to paint them. Something I can do while being narcoleptic and being a real sleepy head. Mop up the little drips and blips as I make them. You can see how much fluffier that is. Dabbed over it with the magic eraser. <clears throat> okay, we're on um, my now because I can take make this a little more towards the brown side. Up in here. I try not to overdo the highlights, too, but I'm going to. That's what I do. I overdo. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm going to take that original gray black and just kind of put back some of the highlights um, next to the head. I know now I'm looking at two pictures, so this makes it weirder, but I'm going to, it gets really curly in here, so I want a lot more texture up next to the head. I'm just going to take some black and go for it in here. She's looking pretty fluffy, curly. A lot more low lights though, so I'm just, I'm just gonna get some black here. More black. This is lamp black, which is good. Um, it's almost a maroon black, but it granulates and it makes really nice dog fur. And I'm gonna stop looking at that other picture because I'm going to screw this one up if I keep looking at it. The markings are a little different. Some, see if I can get some more low lights. Highlights, low lights, it all contributes to making a fluffy looking dog. And she is about the fluffiest. You know if you've seen Labradoodles, Golden Doodles. Our last, one of our last dogs we lost a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I was part like a quarter poodle and a quarter golden. And that dog, she had, she had poodle fur and she had Border Collie fur and German Shepherd fur and I mean she had felt <laughs> felted fur and long fur and she shed like like crazy. She was super smart and super sweet. dry this brush a little bit so I can get some, some narrower chunks of fur. I don't want blobs. Now I could get out my fur brush, which is kind of a, it's like a rake brush. It has longer, alternating longer and shorter hairs. Makes it easier to do fur effect, but this, this is fine. I'll let the, we'll let the paper do, or the paper, the water and the color do its thing, because that's what they do. It's really hard to just not overdo it with watercolor because you want to control it, but watercolor makes such beautiful effects when you let it. All right, babe, I think, I think, well, actually, I'm going to just lighten up some of the bib here, some of the necktie through here. Maybe pick some of this up. I just keep messing it up.
Okay, now, now I've got the black out. I'm going to kill that other picture so that I don't screw up the... Let me see. What I need is the other picture up. I can see the one I'm actually working on. I like to keep the reference photo up on my computer screen too because my printouts never give me the color and the resolution that the computer image does. Alright. I need lips. I need some lips, dog lips up here. I'm making them a little sketchy. Kind of go down on the edges. Okay, I'm going to take a smaller brush and do this better. That's good. That is good. Now, I'm going to take some black paint and do the nose holes. And... color on the eyes. They are they're really dark eyes in the pictures I get. Dog but dog eyes usually are kind of a kind of a burnt sienna. So I'm just gonna start with some burnt sienna. Now you can you can always do the eyes one of two ways. With the highlights you can swap the color on. And then use like a white pen or white paint to put in the highlights. Or you can well actually three ways. You can use masking fluid. And then leave the white, mask the white parts out with masking fluid. But since I'm allergic to latex, I just don't. I usually opt for the uh, paint at the end, the white paint or the white ink. The white Posca pens are my favorite right now for pens. Uh-oh. I've got it set so that I hit my head if I get my head in the way, so I'm hoping I won't get my... <laughs> Add in the picture like I did with the last video. Okay. Around the edges of the eyes is more of this gray. And I wrote, I marked it in. This is where I have to be kind of careful or I end up getting rid of the lights that I want to keep around the eyes. It's a little bit lighter than, sorry, I'm thinking and talking. It's a little bit lighter than the, the fur. Get some eyebrows up in here. They're really cute. I'm just going to go around. 
want the eye, do the eyeliner. So these pink colors I'm using are not staining at all, so they're really easy to pick, pick up. If I mess it up and go back and pick it up. Now for the, the eye color, to sit up straight, um, I'm going to get some burnt umber. Kind of thick, make that darker color of the eyes. Eyes are usually darker at the top. So the best instruction I ever got on how to paint eyes was paint them like a bubble. If you learn to paint a bubble, you can learn to paint an eye. They um, paint bubbles there, darker on the top and lighter on the bottom. Now, all I can really see in the references, in the reference pictures, is that this dog has very dark eyes. But I'm guessing if you're up close to the dog, that there's there's more color visible, and they're probably more more brown. I can always darken it later. Now, one for the black, for the pupils. I like to just kind of drip it in there and let it blend. It's a little more realistic. I'm going to go around, the top of the eye is, is really dark, the shadow around the top of the eye, so I'm going to put that on kind of thick here. Starting to look, starting to look okay here. Now, if I can get a really fine line on the bottom of the iris. It's kind of the look I'm going for. I'm going to blend that a little. my head again. You really need to pay attention to the shape around the eyes or it won't look like the dog you're painting at all. Okay. 
she's just so cute. I like to use a color called Moon Glow for dog noses, but this dog nose is maybe a little more, maybe a little less purple, a little more burnt umbery. But we're going to start with some. This is actually a um, homemade Moon Glow because the kind of the Moon Glow you can buy premixed is what they call a fugitive color and it fades. I want your dog nose fading in a year to kind of a ghostly blue. It's a color that fades in the in the premixed moon glow is the red. So here I mixed some of my own. It's a really nice granulating color. I was thinking, what did I mix this with? There's a lot of formulas online if you look for them for um, how to mix your own moon glow. And I didn't have the color, so I winged it and I used, ah, it's right up there, quinacridone burnt scarlet plus ultramarine blue with a tiny bit of viridian green, which grays it out a little bit. Oh, I'm gonna... yeah. Get another scrubber. Grab some more brushes. This is a little scrubber. And to um, you need to make the nose less pointy on top. Just kind of flatten that out. here. I'll fix this in a bit when I go back with the second layer on the nose. Okay, so I'm going to scrub out around the eyes a little. how I just got red in the middle of the eye there, but I did. That's not good. You don't want your dog eyes being red. This is just my normal, my normal herd of brushes. you see how you see things what you see and being able to transfer the shapes over that up and suddenly it looks like a dog eye
go do a little more detail down on the feet. The feet are a little more colorful than that. toes here. They're so cute. White and tan toes. That's something that I'm a sucker for when I'm adopting a dog is if they have white toes, it's like all over for me. They're coming home. Just love the white toes. Okay. All right. Um, mess with the hair up above a little bit more. This is a lot lighter than my reference photo, so I'll scrub on a little bit and pick it. Pick it up. Make those eyebrows more pronounced. She's looking pretty good. There's still there's a white hair that kind of comes around down around the eyes here. I want it. I want to get that picked up. And the same on the other side. There's kind of curls around the eye. Now, the thing about painting animals is you can mess up just about everything, but if you mess up the eyes, it's not going to look like it's not going to look like the dog that you're trying to paint. All right, I also need to. Where are you? Where are you, big scrubber? There you are, right in front of my face. Okay. I want this more white down in front here. So scrub it up a bit. where I get a little too obsessive and overdue. Pardon me. You want to get 
You want to get the shape of the muzzle. Still not really happy with the eyes here. Some of these hairs kind of come over the eyes. So I'm gonna take my scrubber. Use it backwards. Push it around a little bit so it gets some of the light colored hairs. Okay, now I'm going to. <laughs> oh, I just want to scrub more. Satisfying. It's so satisfying to scrub. Now, this is a case where I should probably just back up and look at it from a few feet away. away and I'm going to take my little detail brush. I'm going to put back some of the color under the eyes. This is just a little wrong around the dog's bright eye. This one, the one that's on my left here. It's, 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 these highlight, low lights, highlights, low lights, whatever they are, come a little bit down farther. And then let's put in some really fine details here. These some rounded markings. And I really want the eyes to shine and kind of bold, so I'm gonna put some more of the burnt sienna around there so they so they're a little prettier, less dark. And then Redo some of the highlights around some of the eyeliner. Some of the darker markings around the eyes. Rug scrubber, but I'm gonna scrub this. Scrub that a little more. You want it to look like hairs, not blobs. And now that nose is a little too purple, so I'm gonna go over it with some. Um, I'll we'll pick up some burnt under here. Yeah, we'll just mix it in with the other stuff. Pretty sure I stuck my head in there. Kind of got this 
this looks a little like it's a little too far down so I'm going to pick some of that up too usually the, the nose comes to a point the nose holes are kind of a comma shaped but they're a little more pronounced here and I want to pick up some highlights on there so just lift some of that off Smooch that around. And there's usually a reflection. It's not very pronounced on this dog, but on the bottom of the nose hole, you can definitely see that there's a reflection down, down along. anymore. I'm going to go over the nose again. One more little layer. Just Ugh, that's, that is not thick enough. <laughs> not thick enough paint. So I'll just do it again. Try it off. Do it. darker blow. I should really just stop fussing and let it dry and then adjust later. Stuff gets weird. Okay, watch her overdo the nose. Lose the nose holes. Get the black back and darken those holes again. Just kind of that comma shape back in there. And I think I think she's looking pretty good. I don't like right around the eyes, so let me, let me add it again. Let me add that. Let's go now. Okay, I'm going to let that dry, and while I'm letting it dry, I'm going to paint some background on here. Now, the background of the reference photo is really kind of boring. It's just a dog sitting on a tan floor with a gray wall in the background, so I'm going to, I'm going to put some color in there. I'm trying to decide what color I take. I'm always stuck in a rut with background color, which 
I really like to use blue. And it's a specific color of blue that I like, which is Payne's Gray Blue Shade by Schmincke. But I'm going to let the... I don't know. I might just get a wild hair and do some color. Just make it fun. And... Like, what if I did some... Oh, I don't know. What if I did some yellow? Ooh, kind of goldy yellow. Ooh. I mean... Yellow and some kind of let the colors mix a little here. I don't know, I might hate this. Should make some pretty green, maybe some orange. <laughs> I do not know. I don't know, guys. How about We'll just let it all mix together and be crazy. Yeah, yellow is a little too much, I think. But, the, but I'm liking the orange. Yeah, which is Ozzy Red Gold. Something I've been playing with my palettes. So I have usually use two palettes and I end up stacking them on top of each other, which is really strange. Ooh, what if I put some... What if I put some red? <laughs> um, and now it happens when I go to paint, like, I do paint-alongs with with Andy Geeson and I do things tutorials from Lois Davidson and <laughs> my pet palette needs different colors than from the from my landscape and flower palette. Even though I'm hopeless at flowers I keep trying. I'll put some green I'm gonna mix some green in here too. Yeah, I don't know. I guess me. I'm going back to the old, the old standby with the um, schminky blue, Payne's gray blue shade. the oranges and the reds are not so big on the greens right now. So I'm gonna lift everything. Lift it off a little. I don't know. It's one thing I, I'm I'm really boring with my background so I can see once the paint dries around the eyes, I'm going to go back with some white. Put in the put in the sparkle in the eyes because they look too dark. I'm going to paint this right up into the dog. He's darker, the darker background here.
this is not a paid commission, so I can just go kind of go nuts and do what I want. But, but I usually offer these to the dog owners. Actually, what would look good down here is some purple and some of that moon glow that I mixed up. Just some Maybe that's the color I'm looking for here. It's just some splat in some moon glow. I'm liking, I'm liking this combination. And it's going to dry a lot later. One thing else I could do is do some salt. some pinks and blues here. maybe getting carried away up here but you know I'm usually boring I'm usually boring background person so let's mix some carmine in with the magnesium blue nova and that kind of blends well with the colors on the bottom so What I can do, where's my salt shaker? If I can find my salt shaker, I'll put some salt on, but um, I'm not sure where that went. Oh, salt shaker, where are you? Oh, salt shaker. I lose stuff like that. I mean, where'd it go? Oh, oh there's, some, there's some margarita salt. Sprinkle some of that on. That will make it more interesting. It's all about making it interesting. Still don't know where my salt shaker ran off to though. up here. I don't know why. Well, I can pick that off. Actually, it looks 
looks yellow is kind of staining. She's going crazy, people. A little bit of carmine and salt back. Oh, mysteries of life. Where did my salt go? Okay, now while that obnoxiously crazy background is drying, I'm going to take this scrubber. And I'm going to scrub out the toes that I just lost down here. Because I kind of painted over them. because I can I'm gonna get my detail brush and paint in some of the darker details on that buckle on the collar some neutral tint for the buckle details they just kind of come around and I come around like that It's kind of a weird collar thing, but I go around the edges. some curls. I'm going to take some of this later stuff and go over it. Put some of those little curls back in over over the buckle because I can because the, this is opaque. It's more opaque paint. Too, with the 
titanium. Just kind of get some highlights. This dog has a lot more hardware on than what I'm painting because she is a service dog and I'm just not just not doing it though. You can see the some of the cool effects I'm getting with the salt now in the background. See how I'm getting some of those highlights it's down the middle of the leg. It, there's some of the lighter highlights. Okay, and I'm going to call it done soon and let it dry. But first, first I need some, I need some highlights. I need some, I need the sparkle back in the eyes. And if you look at the reference, they're kind of, yeah. I like to exaggerate the highlights too. You can see around the bottom of the eye, kind of, you can see the whites of the eye. They don't always match left to right. In fact, a lot of times they really don't. Um, put some of these light hairs in with my pen. If I don't like these, I can take a wet brush. This is water-based and it will it will blend. I've got the well, I've got the white. I'll just do some of the nose here. Smudge it out with my fingers. Some of these hairs. kind of erased part of the toe here so it's a very white toe top of the toe and the claw get some over here this is a pump bottle so it's kind of a pain but I'm probably going to take and blend these out a bit Little sparkles on the nose too. Kind of get the nose texture going there. Okay. A little nuts. Going a little nuts. Oh, background's a little too much. But well, gotta live with it.
think Ms. Valkyrie here is looking done. That's what I think. This, I'm going to turn this into a metallic loop here soon. Get out the metal paint, which is in another palette that I keep for metallic paint. Magnetized. So let's just put this layer of metallic. Actually, what I really need is white white as background of the metallic so let me do that now you can see i do a lot of this on the fly but it's like i don't i'm very impatient and i don't wait for it to dry like it should so don't be like me or do be like me because i have a lot of fun here okay now there now it's got a ring with the ring kind of okay I am done so I'm gonna sign this and call Ms. Valkyrie here done I might mess with the background because I'm, I don't know, here, I can do this, I can, <laughs> just, uh, I'm thinking if I just lighten it a bit, I'd be happier. And really, this is definitely a case of let it dry and then use the magic eraser because there's salt. And the salt can wreck the paper. Kind of fireworks. It kind of looks like fireworks now. It's kind of fun. Do see something else that I need to mess with a little, which is around the mouth. Let's get these little hairs going. Let's get the little beard going. Fix the little beard hairs under the nose. Get some of that detail. the same up here and I can mess all day literally I'm drawing a few hairs up you know, on the muzzle too and definitely don't need to get them all okay now I'm, now I'm a little happier with that There you go. Oh, it's gonna dry, and hopefully, I'll like it once it's dry. Oh, sorry, here we go again. I'm gonna do a little bit of the neutral tint again and get this. Mud. 
mouth. This is dark in the mouth a little bit. to sign it until it's dry but there and the background isn't boring and she looks pretty good oh have fun with this and I am out